time at beautiful Vancouver Island at the media launch of the new Hyundai Vera Cruze. This is Cowichan Bay. This vehicle promises to prove once and for all that Hyundai is capable of building truly upscale vehicles. It wasn't too many years ago that Hyundai meant only one thing to car buyers an inexpensive set of wheels with few frills and a dubious resale value. Things have changed dramatically since then with products like the Sonata, Azura, Santa Fe and now the Veracruz. Hyundai's that have been tested have posted very high quality ratings from respected JD Power and some products have earned the highest possible crash test ratings from the US traffic safety people. Hyundai has never fielded a product in the crossover utility market the Veracruz will compete in. Typical rivals include the Acura MDX, Honda Pilot, GMC Acadia and Toyota Highlander, not to mention mid-sized Lexus and Infiniti utility vehicles. Well this is my very first experience behind the wheel of a Veracruz and uh, my first impression is that it's quite upscale, it feels very, very Mercedes BMW like inside, not just for the feel, the refinement of the vehicle, but the, the cabin ambience is very good. I feel pretty comfortable in the seat, so, so far so good. The styling of the Veracruz is very contemporary and fits right in with rival crossover utility vehicles. It's sleeker and lower than most mid-sized SUVs and has the three rows of seats that seem to be a must these days in this class. A distinctive swoopy crease runs along the bodywork from the projector beam headlight cluster to the rear of the vehicle. Best of all, bodywork quality is just excellent, matching that of the best in this segment. All the panels fit beautifully, as does the door trim, window seals and other components. Hyundai has tried very hard to try and match Lexus quality and this work is really paying off. Like so many rivals these days, they've put pretty well all the controls right there on the central part of the dash. I like the way it looks, it's this silvery finish which looks quite expensive. One thing I really like about the interior of the Veracruz, and it's this particular vehicle, the leather is exactly the way I like to see leather. It's leather looking leather, if you get what I mean. It's a really nice brown colored leather. To me, this is the perfect leather color, the one I'd choose if I were to buy a Veracruz. As with many rival automakers, Hyundai's put several controls on the steering wheel. You can operate the cruise control, very easy to see here and the functions are quite straightforward and also the sound system. One thing Honda is getting very good at is the accuracy of fit and the quality of the interiors. There isn't a, a gap anywhere that I can see that shows there was any sloppy assembly or anything like that. It's a very fine piece of work. One mistake Hyundai has made with this vehicle is not providing a navigation system right from the start. It's neither standard nor optional right now. I found out recently that anything upscale, people do want that nav system. Hyundai says they will have one later on in the program, maybe in a year or two, but I think they should have had it right from the start. Veracruz power comes from a 3.8 liter double overhead cam V6, developing 260 horsepower. This engine provides great response and is very refined at almost any RPM level. Some journalists at the launch were saying that on the highway, the Veracruz was even quieter than an equivalent Lexus. The transmission is a six-speed automatic with a now common manual option. The shifts were quite seamless and the ratios well chosen for most kinds of driving. One thing that springs to mind after sitting behind the wheel for an hour or so is that this is a very supple suspension on the Veracruz. It really seemed to smooth out the bumps efficiently to create a very comfortable ride without losing any control. I feel in control, it's quite a nimble handling vehicle, but boy, it sure smooths out the bumps on these country roads. As with any utility vehicle, this rig shouldn't be driven like a sports car, but it does have impressive handling for its class. Safety features include powerful anti-lock disc brakes with electronic brake force distribution. There's also a stability control system built into the roster of electronics. The all-wheel drive system uses a torque on demand arrangement inspired a lot of confidence during one dramatic rainstorm I encountered during the media launch. There are six standard airbags including side curtain units for head protection in the T-bone impacts we all dread. This should prove to be a very safe vehicle both passively and dynamically. 
From an overall point of view, the Veracruz deserves to win itself a solid share of the market. It's very competitively priced at a shade under $40,000 in GLS form and just below $46,000 in top-of-the-line limited. The luxury crossover segment is getting very crowded these days, but there's no reason why the Honda Veracruz shouldn't make a good impression. From Shimanus BC with its famous murals, for the new driver's seat, I'm Tony Whitney.